There is an impending extinction crisis that the world's primates are facing. Human activities, principally deforestation and forest risk commodities contribute. And by forest risk commodities, what we're referring to are a set of both agricultural and non-agricultural commodities like soybeans, palm oil, beef production, mining, timber extraction, fossil fuel extraction. The consequence of these resources is that they result in the permanent deforestation and conversion of forested habitats into monocultures, pastures, and degraded and polluted habitats. And one of our goals is to provide solutions to help mitigate against the impending extinction crisis and to develop ways of more sustainably using resources and protecting primate populations. And there's been an expansion of this global international commodities trade. It's expanding at a very rapid rate and it has resulted in a significant decline in primate populations. We focused on the Neotropics, which is Mexico, Central and South America, Africa, including the island of Madagascar, Southeast Asia and South Asia. There's been an increase of about 300% across all of these four areas in commodities trade over the last 15 years. And it's increased in different countries in these regions at different rates. We looked at a number of global forestry databases that provide information on the rate and the extent of deforestation and conversion of natural habitats that are occurring in these primate habitat countries. The trade in primate risk commodities over the past 15 years alone has resulted in the destruction of 1.8 million square kilometers of habitat. That's an area the size of Mexico. In the case of Southeast Asia, 47% of deforestation over the past 15 years has resulted from these forest risk commodities. In the neotropics, 26% of all forest lost is the result of these forest risk commodities. In South Asia, 26%. And in Africa, it's a bit less, it's 7%. In different areas of the world, we found that there were different commodities that were differentially contributing to deforestation. Approximately 95% of the forest risk commodities that are exported by these primate habitat countries are imported by only 10 consumer nations in the world. And these are principally the United States, China, the EU, Canada, and Japan. And in fact, the United States and China account fully for 58% of the commodity forest risk exports, but it comes at a great cost uh, to the environment and people living in these primate habitat countries who are still relatively poor, food insecure, they have income inequality, and there's still political instability in a lot of these countries. If we look at the 15 primate richest countries in the world, by the end of this century, if we don't change business as usual, 80 to 100% of the primate species in those countries will be threatened with extinction or be extinct. It was important for us to focus on not only the problems that we currently have, but what are a potential set of sustainable solutions to mitigate against both the primate extinction crisis to help the well-being of people who live in habitat countries and to reduce the footprint that we are having on the environment. And so we came up with a number of strategies or solutions that we feel are sustainable. They involve changes in behavior. Business as usual is just simply not sustainable. Some of our suggested solutions include shifting to a healthier diet. Beef has an, a, a tremendous footprint on the environment. We also need to reduce the use of palm oil. We need to develop 
a serious set of greening strategies, we need to green trade. And what we mean by that is that the cost of a product needs to include the environmental cost of production. And then those funds need to be put into an international fund that can be used to try to mitigate some of the problems. We also would suggest that we need to expand and empower local farmers and local producers in primate habitat countries so that they can be in charge of community forests. A lot of Effective conservation is done at local levels because you need local communities to be stakeholders in these conservation efforts. If you're asking people to change their behavior, you need to also show that there are benefits to them. We have a window of time to change our behavior, but that requires leadership and a set of people uh, worldwide who can help direct this effort. It cannot be done by any one country. It's not the fault of any one country, but we need international agreements to move this forward. It is the consumer nations that are driving the demand for these products. We need international leadership. This is a human problem. The primates are like the canary in the coal mine. What we're doing is not sustainable if we continue to degrade, pollute, to harm our natural environment. Not only will primate species not survive far into the future, but also these habitats uh, will not be suitable for humans as well. Our next goal is to look at this um, at a more fine-grained level and to perhaps make recommendations for individual countries, individual regions for the countries, um, and help work with experts in those countries to try to move forward uh, and to come up with effective conservation solutions.